This may not be what you want to hear, especially if you recently bought an Apple Silicon Mac, but we are on the verge of having other, potentially less expensive alternatives that are going to give us the same or even better performance than Apple Silicon. Alright folks, you can't make this stuff up. This is the stuff that Hollywood movie scripts are made of. Here's the backstory. As you might have heard by now, Apple Silicon has been a wild success for Apple and even for the entire industry because it proved that ARM-based processors can be shoved into consumer machines and consumer laptops to be more specific because they can increase efficiency quite a bit. In plain English, what does that mean? Laptops can have more power and last longer. That's it. And I have a ton of tests on my channel to prove this. Well, during this time, a little side story has been happening. A company, a little startup called Nuvia, was started. Uh, we've got three people that started this company. Gerard Williams, John Bruno, and Manu Gulati. Who are these people? Oh, Gerard Williams, former chief architect of Apple Silicon. John Bruno, he spent five years at Apple, where he founded Apple Silicon's competitive analysis team. Manu spent eight years at Apple as lead SOC architect responsible for Apple's leading edge mobile SOCs. In other words, Apple's ARM chips. Hmm. Nuvia started designing ARM-based chip of their own. Surprise, surprise. Now, this part is important, and I'll come back to why. Nuvia's chip that they've designed is a server chip tested for a server with 12 performance cores and it didn't have any efficiency cores. Fast forward just a little bit to 2021 and when Qualcomm purchased Nuvia, the whole company in 2021, and it purchased well, didn't purchase. You can't purchase people. That's illegal. But they they got these people, these three people on board. Fast forward a little bit more to 2023 and Qualcomm just announced their new Snapdragon Elite X chip, which I'm not making this up, is an ARM based chip with 12 performance cores and no efficiency cores. Hmm. I wonder what happened there. Maybe, just maybe, this is the same chip that Nuvia designed based on the brains that designed Apple Silicon. And they're gonna take this server chip and shove them into laptops in 2024. They're promising insane speeds that rival Apple M2 chips, even in some instances, show benchmarks that rival the M2 Max chip, actually beating the M2 Max chip. That's not bad, that's good. We, we should like competition, right, as consumers. I do. For example, this Snapdragon Elite X does look pretty impressive, although it doesn't quite beat the M2 Ultra in a number of cores department, but it does have Apple beat in certain cases. It uses the four nanometer process, whereas Apple is still on the five nanometer process, which is not as fast. And the Snapdragon cores peak at 3.8 gigahertz, while Apple's only peak at 3.5 gigahertz. And Snapdragon supports Wi-Fi 7, whereas Apple's chips only are at Wi-Fi 6 only. I still have five in my house. But let's for a moment assume that the new Snapdragon chips will be faster than anything else we might have seen before. Does that even matter? Vendors have been converting their Mac software to run on ARM for a few years now, and we're mostly there, so that's a huge head start. Windows for ARM, though, is just starting to wake up, a little bit late to the game. It will get there eventually, but it's nowhere even close right now. So even if we get these new chips on new Windows machines in 2024, the software won't be there because so far vendors have been mostly ignoring the tiny, tiny Windows for ARM market. And I've covered Microsoft's developer-oriented ARM machine called Project Volterra, which was a cool name that they later officially changed to Windows Dev Kit 2023. Ugh. And you can see my dev tests on that machine, comparing it to Apple's machines on this channel. I'll link to some of the videos below the like button. And that box has a decent processor in it too. But there's a constant wall that I kept hitting. Software. Google support. Oh, hi, is this Google? Yes. Yeah, uh, do you have the Chrome browser? Yes. Oh, great, can I use it on my Mac? Yes, our software is available for Mac. Oh, uh, what about ARM? Yes, our software is available for ARM on Mac. Just download the Apple Silicon version. Oh, um, I also have a Windows laptop. Yes, we do Windows as well. Oh, it looks like I have Windows for ARM. Uh, do you support that? Um, sorry, gotta go. Hello? 
Listen, I'm not too worried about it. Good things will come to Windows for ARM. It will just take a little bit more time. And look at Apple. Usually Apple is the one waiting to bring features to their ecosystem. Features that have been around for a while on other systems that have been tried and tested. So in this case, Microsoft is doing the same thing. Now they see that consumers are demanding ARM-based hardware and software, so they will ramp up. My guess is that 2024 will be the year where Windows for ARM really starts to become a more of a common thing. Imagine a Windows laptop that will last for days without needing a charge. Yes, Qualcomm reported that Snapdragon X Elite is going to be delivering 60% higher performance at peak power and use 65% less power at the same performance level when compared to different uh, Intel chips like the, uh, the 13th generation i7, for example. But we know that we know that the Intel based i7s and i9s are not extremely efficient, are they? But that's not where it ends. Qualcomm's presentation also revealed that their new SoC will be 50% faster than the M2 while consuming 30% less power. What? I want to see this. So with the new Snapdragon Elite X coming, is this the end of Apple Silicon's supreme reign at the top of the food chain? Maybe, but not without a fight from Apple. I see on the day that Qualcomm announced their new ARM-based Snapdragon chip, Apple announced a surprise October event, which could be the launch of their M3 chips. There are plenty of rumors out there and speculations about this, including that this M3 will be a three nanometer process. I don't know. Who knows? It's Apple. We don't know. Benchmarks are not yet available, but definitely subscribe to this channel to see updates and developer focused tests that I'll be running once those machines launch and I get my hands on them. Now, here's why I believe these rumors. When I upgraded from the M1 Max MacBook Pro to the M2 Max MacBook Pro, I actually didn't notice that much of an improvement. Not like I noticed uh, an improvement in my wallet weight. See, Apple needs to keep consumer attention on them and they need to deliver something that really makes a difference and fast. Apple's earnings call is coming up shortly, so they need to drum up some serious excitement here so they can save 2023 and get a head start on 2024. What do you think they're going to launch? Leave a comment down below. Now, while we wait for all the new chips, make sure you're familiar with the current ARM landscape. I made a video comparing Apple Silicon with Qualcomm chips inside Microsoft's ARM-based desktop machine, which you can watch next by clicking right over here.